Hello and welcome to uh, Do It Again Fitness. My name is Erin Massey and I'm a certified group fitness instructor and personal trainer. Today the goal of the workout is to help strengthen the muscles that are specifically designed to help stabilize the spine and the lower back. It's actually designed for one of my clients who just happens to have a disc herniation. Now I know a lot of the clients I work with and I'm pretty sure a lot of you actually have a lot of issues with lower back pain. One of the best things that you can do for your back is to actually strengthen it. So we're going to be focusing on uh, hips, glutes, thighs, and lower back, but it's a complete body workout. So we're going to be doing low impact moves, which do not put pressure on the lower back, but we're still working upper and lower, and we're going to be doing a lot of core exercises. So the purpose of this video is to show you that you can do a full body workout in the comfort of your own home with only a few pieces of fitness equipment. So get ready, and I'll see you at the finish line. So this workout is meant to be an introductory workout. So if you have not worked out in a long time, no worries. You can easily use three pounders or five pounders. Now, if you're a little bit more advanced, it's still a pretty intense workout, so feel free to upgrade to eight pounds. So now that you've loosened up some of the muscles with the golf ball and you're all ready to work out, let's get it started. We're gonna start with marching it up. Now make sure throughout the workout, you're gonna be tightening your core. What that means is you're pulling navel to spine the entire workout. A lot of people don't realize that your core entire trunk, if you were to cut off your arms and your legs, is what supports the entire body. Once you have a problem with that, as we know with herniated discs or sciatica, kind of throws everything out of balance. Your body then needs to compensate. So what I want to teach you to do, let's get it moving, is to not compensate if you don't have to. You've got to squeeze that deep internal transverse abdominis, which lays in between the obliques and the latissimus dorsi. That's what's going to help prevent your back from getting further injury and help it to heal. Now we're gonna add a little bit of a side step here. No twisting or turning because as we know, disc herniation, twisting and turning can actually aggravate it a little bit more. So six, are you squeezing those abs? Four, three, two, march it out. Now as you notice, I don't add music to my video, so feel free to add music between 125 and 130 beats per minute. Okay, let's do it again in four, Three, two, and one. Here we go. Eight, seven. We're getting the heart rate going. What we're doing is we're also engaging the muscles that we're going to be utilizing throughout the workout. And four, three, two. We're going to nice kick it forward with a heel for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now kick it back for eight, eight. Seven, I'll squeeze that core. Five, should look like this. Four, three, two, side to side. Eight, seven, six, five. Have fun with it. Three, two, one last time to the back. Eight, seven, we're gonna add a punch. Five, get those thighs, shoulders, and upper back muscles ready. In four. Three, two, side to side with the arm for eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Now we're not twisting. If you do not have any back issues, feel free to twist all the way across. Two, and again, waking it up those obliques. Seven, six, five. Now you want to establish a breathing pattern when you're working out. Four, three, usually you want to exhale at the exertion. And again, it's my favorite word when I'm working out. Six, you know you can push yourself. Statistics show four more. The people who work out with a trainer exert 17% more energy than if they were to do it by themselves. Now march it out. Eight, seven, six, five, and giving that heart rate up. Three, two, and one. Warm up should last between three and five minutes. You want to make sure that your heart is adequately prepared for the workout to come. What we're going to do now is this is actually going to help strengthen the back and the legs, but it's a cardio move, not high impact. So we're going to go ahead and step out here. This is a stabilizer leg right here. We're going to bring the knee in to the chest and the elbows back. Now, if you have a disc issue where you're in a lot of pain, you might want to not want to do this exercise right off the bat because it requires a lot of stability. 
We're going to be doing this nice and slow. However, if you do have disc pain, the recommendation is to do one-legged exercises instead of two-legged exercises. So what this is doing is we're focusing right here on squeezing those lats and the core, bringing the knee in here. So four, three, make sure we're exhaling. And one, let's do one more set. I know you can do it. You're gonna to start to feel some lactic acid buildup in the hamstring of the stabilizer leg. You're working quads, glutes, with a little bit lower back because it's stabilizing. In four, three, two, let's quicken up the pace for eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, keep that stomach nice and tight. One, hold it up. Three, two, and release. Woo! Great job. If you need to ever grab any water during an exercise, feel free to do so. Now we're going to be working the opposite leg. Stepping it back with the left leg. Here we go, bringing it in. Right leg is a stabilizer. Seven, six, five. Make sure the back is flat and you're not arching or hunching over. Four, three, breathing. And again, want to make sure both sides are even. Eight. You might notice that one side is weaker than the other. That's okay. Push through. We want our sides to be even. Four. Three. Now don't cheat. Only cheat if your form is compromised. Make sure that you're coming down with the same sit you were doing on the other side. And pulse it out for eight. Seven. Six. Five, focus on that stabilizer leg. You're gonna feel it. Let's work through it. Four, three, but not to the point of pain, only to the point of burning. And again, eight, seven, six, come on, let's go. Four, you got this. Three, two, hold it down. Three, two, and release. Good job, shake it out. Awesome job. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on legs. Make sure if you need to, go ahead and grab some water in between the different exercises, okay? We don't want you to get dehydrated. Now, there's a move that um, I did some research on. It's actually recommended to do before every leg exercise, especially if you have lower back issues. The purpose of this exercise, we're gonna hold it up into a side plank is to help strengthen the muscles in the core that protect the back. Now instead of doing a side plank here and twisting it like we would normally do, if you feel inclined to do this exercise, please feel free. However, if you have lower back issues, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it down to the elbow here, and we're just going to lean forward like this. Seven. Six. Bringing the elbow to the floor. Five. Go ahead and squeeze for four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and take a break. We're going to switch sides. Now you want to make sure you're not twisting at all, and you want to make sure you're not coming down too far either. Stomach is nice and tight. Arm is nice and stabilized. Elbows here. We're just leaning for eight. You're going to feel a lot of that in the core, especially the upper portion of the abdominals. Four more. Three. Good. Two. And one. Now for those of you who are, tend to be a little bit more of a beginner, what you can do is, instead of having both legs up, one leg will be stabilizing here and it's a lot easier to come down and up. So feel free to modify any of the moves that I do. Go ahead and go at your own pace. All right? We're gonna go ahead and grab the ball, start with our first leg exercise. So my favorites are lunges and squats. Now you're gonna have to find a place up against the wall to do this. What I'd recommend 
I'm looking for a blank spot in my wall, which is kind of hard to find in here. Um, okay, we're moving on to our next move. We're going to focus on squats and lunges. Now, I want to let you know that there's a lot of controversy about whether it's safe or not for someone to do lunges or squats if they have lower back issues, especially disc herniation. What I want to let you know today is as long as the back is supported, you can feel free to try the exercise. If you start to feel any pain whatsoever, please stop and move on to the next, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to do start off with a traditional squat. You're putting this ball, stability ball, against the wall here, so your back is completely supported. What we're going to do is we're going to stand here and we're going to go ahead and come down to a squat. Now as many of you know, your squat positioning is extremely important. If it's the right way, then your knees and your lower back will be supported. What you're doing here is you're going to press your back fully against the wall and the ball is going to be right between the lower back and the upper back. So coming down, usually when I do sets, I do sets of eight. So if I start to talk and you're wondering how many more, you have to go, feel free to count by yourself. Okay, we have two more. Something else that I want to address, last one, we're going to go again, second set. Make sure that your knees are right above your ankle to the middle of your foot. If your knees are coming down too far and you can't see your toes, that means you're putting a lot of unnecessary stress on the knee and on the lower back. Okay. We have four more to go. What we're doing is we're isolating quads, hands, and glutes. Make sure you exhale on the exertion, or if you prefer, go ahead and switch it around. I tend to exhale as I'm exerting the most force. Now what we want to do when we're exercising, we want to vary the intensity and the amount of reps we're doing to keep the body guessing. What we're going to do here is we're going to do a nice little pulse. Six. You can go ahead and hold your arms out if you'd like. Four. So we're adding a lot of tension into these muscles right here. Two. You're going to feel it. Feel it. Hold it. Eight. You got this. Seven. Don't give up. Six. Five. Four. Come on. Three. Don't stop. Two. And one. Pulse it out. Eight. Yes. I know. You hate me right now. It's okay. Four. <laughs> three. Two, we got this. Unless you're hurting, you feel like your muscle's gonna rip, please don't stop. And don't exaggerate either. Six, five, four, I know, two, and release. <sighs> nice deep breath in. Wonderful job. We're gonna do that again. Go ahead and march it out. Again, if you don't have any lower back issues, feel free to do this without the ball. Go ahead and strengthen that back a little bit more as you stabilize with the back. All right, are we ready? Yes, we are. Here we go. Eight, nice and slow. Your feet should be about shoulder width apart. And again, you've got to focus on drawing that navel to spine, just like you would do in Pilates, okay? If you've never done Pilates before, suck it in. <laughs> Good. Four more here. Good. Three. I know. Two. And one. Let's do that again. Yes, I did say it again. Yep. Six. Good. Five. Four. Let's go three more. Three. You know, when I train clients, I get to hear a lot of things, a lot of whining. Luckily, I don't have to hear your whining. <laughs> Good. Pulse it out. Here we go. Seven. Squeeze that stomach. Five, if you need to hold your waist here, whatever you need to do to get through it. Four, three, two, and hold. Seven, squeeze it in, don't let it go. Five, four, three, yes, we have one more. Here we go. Eight, seven, now we're feeling it. Come on. Four, we're almost done. Two, and release. Nope, 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 keep it going. Come on. Six, five, four, Three, two, and release. I think if my legs didn't give out, my feet would because they're slipping on this hardwood floor. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do lunges. Go ahead and grab the ball. Put it up against the wall. Again, if you have a lot of lower back pain, I wouldn't recommend this exercise. You can easily fast forward to some of the hip exercises we'll be doing later, okay? Here we go. You want to make sure, again, 
So you're coming down into nice 90 degree angles, upper and lower. You don't want to cut yourself short and do a lunge that's a little bit too short front or back. That means that there's probably some imbalances in the muscle. I recommend strengthening the inner thigh, stretching out the T-band with a foam roller. That's definitely the encouragement I have for anyone who wants to start a workout program. Good. Keep it going. Four. Now if you start to feel any pain, go ahead and go back to squats. Two. Make sure your hip is firmly planted against the ball. All right, we're gonna switch. I don't wanna put unnecessary strain on the lower back. Go ahead and stretch the legs out here. Make sure that your legs are the same distance apart as they were on the other side. Again, you may notice that one side of the body is a little bit weaker than the other side. But don't give up. You want to stay balanced. Make sure you're breathing. Four more. Stomach nice and tucked. I keep reminding you because most of my clients keep forgetting. Don't push it out. One more set here. Last set, seven, six, good, five more, five, should be feeling it, mostly in the back leg, two, and one, great job, arched out. I know, we're doing squats one more time. I like to usually cycle my different exercises, doing something pretty intense, starting with eight, and then switching to something else, and then coming back to it. So you might notice a pattern. Good. Now if you start to compromise your form, I want you to stop, readjust your form. I'd rather have you do less reps than compromise your form. Okay, four more. Three. After this, we get a water break. You've earned it. And one. Again, here we go. Eight. Good. Go ahead and listen to your music. Zone out, whatever you need to do. Five. Four. Three. We got this. Are you ready for the pulse? Because I am. Here we go. Pulse it out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, excuse me, two, again, eight. Come on. Squeeze it tight. Don't lose your form. Shoulders are back. Relax the shoulders. Three, two, and hold. Eight, seven, six. Come on. Four, three, two, and release. We're gonna do that again. March it out, grab some water if you need it. Other token advice is don't wear socks on a wooden floor like I did. Simply silly, take off your socks, you get a lot more traction with your bare feet. Now in between socks, I like to keep moving because when you stop, your heart rate decelerates. And the blood can actually pull to the extremities pretty quickly. I know this is not a super high impact workout, but I still want to make sure that we're not starting something intense, stopping, starting, and stopping, that we're moving through it pretty continuously. Okay? Woo! We got this. Let's do it again. Shoulder width apart, focusing on the quadriceps, hamstrings, and glutes, coming down into a nice squat. Four, three, two, and again, seven, good, six, five more, you got this, five, four, three, come on, two, we're almost done, let's not give up, pulse it out, eight, nice and small, about an inch to an inch and a half in height, again, we're increasing the tension in the muscles, so you're going to feel it. Three, 
two, hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and again, pulse it out, eight, seven, six, five, come on, four, don't lose that form, if you're losing it, stop and readjust, hold it out, five, breathing, four, three, two, and we did it, awesome job. If you're a beginner to go ahead and just use three to five pounds. Now we're using this ball so that it supports the back. If you want to do it up against the wall, it's completely fine. You can add a squat to it to make it a little bit more difficult. Or if you're more advanced, feel free to go ahead and stand up and do a squat and a bicep curl at the same time. That way you're actually utilizing more muscle groups to bring more calories. It's a little bit more intense. For our purposes today, we're just going to use the ball. Again, you're drawing navel to spine. Here we go. Elbows are tucked in nice and tight. All we're doing here is drawing the weight down to the ball. We're going to do two sets. These should be a little bit difficult. Not super easy. If you're breezing through them, please heavy up. All right, four more. Now watch the wrists. People with hypermobile wrists tend to bend the wrists back a little bit. You want to make sure your wrists are nice and tight and you are in full control of the weight. Make sure you're breathing. One more set, here we go. Again, tuck in that stomach, because when you tuck in the stomach, it's supporting that back. Five more, feel free to count out loud. Four, three, if that motivates you, do it. Two, increasing intensity, here we go. Pulse it out, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and hold. Nice hold here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. I'll go ahead and show you from the side view. Eight, seven. Again, you're not using momentum. You're not swinging your arm, and you're not stopping halfway, making sure we're coming all the way down. Nice and slow. If it gets hard and you can't do it, go ahead and lighten up. Four, shoulders back, stomach tucked, breathing. Two, getting ready for that nice, difficult pulse. Here we go. Eight, four, three, two, and release. Four, three, two, get ready for a pulse, and then we're gonna, we're gonna challenge you just a bit. Here we go, pulse it in the middle, again, tight wrists, about an inch to an inch and a half in height. Four, three, two, and hold. Nice and strong, stomach tucked, back flat, shoulders relaxed, pulse it out. Five, four, three, two, and hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Quick break. Now we're going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to have you do a challenge. Again, if this is too hard or you don't feel like you can do it for different reasons, please feel free to cut it out. But don't just not do it because you don't feel like exerting the effort. All right, here we go. Eight, seven, good. You got to maintain that balance. Five, even if you need to touch your toe here, it's better than not holding the leg up at all. Four, three, two, and we're gonna hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. You might notice that I'm moving my foot around. That's because I need to stay balanced. So don't feel awkward if you're doing the same thing. Left side, here we go. Eight, seven, good, six. Five, count it down, four more, four, come on, three, two, one, hold it out for eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, we're going to pulse, we're going to pulse on the other side too, here we go, eight, four, three, two, 
four, three, two, and release. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Great job. I'm gonna move on to the shoulders and I will actually come back to the biceps as well. So let's move the ball here. We're actually gonna do a cardio tune with a shoulder press. Again, no twisting. However, if you don't have any back issues that you're concerned about, then feel free to twist all you want. Okay, so what this looks like is we're gonna lift up straight in the middle here. Six, five, good, four. You might hear some sand shaking. That's why this ball never moves. It's got a weight inside of it. <laughs> Two, one, and again, good. Let's get the heart rate going a little bit more. What you want to do during a workout is circuit training is actually the most effective because you're actually using more muscle groups, building muscle, burning more calories, moving from one exercise to the next. And you have a higher elevated post-oxygen consumption, which means that your body is actually working harder and has better benefit in burning calories and fat even after 24 to 48 hours after you work out. One, let's go a little bit quicker, ready? Eight, seven, six, starting to feel those shoulders. Four, three, two, one, eight, eight, seven, come on guys, six, five. Might look like a girly exercise, but it really gets those shoulders talking to you. Three, Two, one, keep going. For those of you who want to twist, feel free to twist here. With back issues, especially disc herniation, I wouldn't recommend this exercise unless it's cleared by your doctor. Okay, here we go again. Eight, yes, now we feel it. Six, five, come on, four, three, Two, one. I'm going to hold it out here, just the leg. So you're stabilizing with this left leg right here, just like we did at the beginning. Get down nice and low in a nice squat. Six, five, getting ready to use the arms. Four, three, two, here we go. Upper and lower body together. It's called the compound move. Using more muscle groups burning more calories. So I like to switch it up just a little bit. Come on, keep that leg nice and low. Two, one, again, eight, seven, keep it going, six, five, count with me, four, three, two, one, now just like seven, six, Stomach tight, shoulders pull back. Four, three, two, and one. Now arms, here we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four more. Four, three, two, and one. Switching legs. This time the right leg is the stabilizer. Here we go, just legs. Getting nice and deep in that little sit. Putting all that weight in the middle of your foot. Not leaning forward, don't wanna press into your toe too much. Put too much strain on your knee and lower back. Getting ready to add the arms. Two and one, here we go. Eight, seven, keep it low. Five, four more. Four, three, two, and again. Eight, seven, six, five. Feel that glutes. Three, two, oh, just legs. Here we go. Nice and quick. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, Come on, 
eight, seven, six, five, six, three, one. All right, here we go again with the leg. Again, if this proves to be a little bit too difficult, feel free to just put the leg down and work towards it, okay? Here we go, eight, seven. Good, again, slight tap on the ball. That's where you know where to stop. Five, stomach touch. Count with me. Three, two, Nice and strong. Good. Pulse it out. Eight, seven, six. I know you got this. Four, three, two, and one. We're stronger already. Six, five, four, three, two, and you guessed it. We're doing it again. Eight, seven, good. Six, five. Come on. Count it out. Three, Two, last bit of pulsing and then we'll switch. Eight, seven, six, five, four, almost done. Two and hold. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. Whew. How about we go ahead and stretch the bicep really quickly? Now that the muscle's nice and warm, you always want to wait for the muscles to be warm before you stretch them. All right, other leg, here we go. Eight, seven, good. If you need, find a focal point where you can watch with your eyes or look at, that'll help get through it. <laughs> Three, two, and one. Pulse it out. Here we go. Come on. I know you're tired. Six, five, four. Don't give up now. And singles. Again, if you absolutely can't and you've reached muscle exhaustion, go ahead and take a quick break. Grab some water. If not, don't be wimpy. Let's get through this. Three, two, one. Here we go. Pulse it out. Seven, four, three, two. We did it. Great job. Go ahead and lean it forward. Stretch out that back. Go ahead and stretch back this way. Really good stretch for the lower back. Um, for herniated disc, going ahead and lean back here. It's actually a little bit easier to kind of get farther as you stand up. And release. Let's do that again. And release. Good. That should feel good. Loosening up that back muscle. Reach it up to your extra flexible here. Last bit in front. One more time. All right. All right, so we're moving to the floor section of our workout. What we're going to do here is we're going to do some shoulder work, something that I call swimming. I would say grab the lightest weight that you have. Now be careful when you're on the mat here, you don't want to twist to grab your weight, especially if it's a heavy weight because you can put strain on the lower back. So you have to actually physically move your entire body, grab the weights, and move on back. Now again, this is a stabilizer exercise for the back here, but if you're kind of tired out from all the stability moves we've done today, go ahead and feel free to put this ball behind you Prop it up against a couch, like so. I want you to push yourself, but if you're feeling pain that's not okay, feel free to go ahead and cheat just a little bit. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna focus on the deltoid, which is your shoulder. So we're really utilizing the frontal, medial, and posterior deltoid 
as well as a little bit of the outer pectorals, which is your chest, and some of the trapezius muscles, which are in your upper back. Okay, so what the exercise looks like is here. You're not really leaning too far forward. Again, this is only if you need the stability. For those of us who are okay without and we want to strengthen our lower back, and it's not too tired just yet, you can go ahead and sit it forward. What we're doing is we're hinging at the hips here, coming forward, hinging back. This is when the muscles are most engaged and you're utilizing those abdominal muscles here. Good. We're using a little bit more of the lower abdominals as well. Again, you have that nice stable back and your back is flat. As you come back, there should be no hunching whatsoever. Four more. Four. Three. Two. And one. Let's do that again. I would say to start out, I like to do about two sets of eight. Add a little bit of a challenge in there. If you can do more, feel free to do more. If you need to do less, don't feel embarrassed. Four. Here we go. And again, last set. It's kind of hard to pull from this one. So we're just going to do one more set of singles. Five. Good. Four. You should feel those abs. Three. Two. And one. Good. Go ahead and stretch it out. Shoulder stretch here. Nice deep breaths in. Let's try that again. Again, the ball is more, um, more than acceptable if you'd like to use that instead. Really listen to your body. That's, that's what it's about. Because you know, if you push yourself too much, then you won't want to work out again for probably too long of a period of time. If you take it slow and build, it'll be rather um, easy to work out every other day. You can work out your entire body every other day, give it at least 24 hours to rest depending on what program you're on. You can do abdominals every day if you'd like. All right, let's go again. All right, 16 more, come on. 16, count it out loud. 14, I can't hear you. 12. 10 more, we got this. Count nine. Seven. Again, your form is most important, so double check your form in the mirror. You always want to make sure you're protecting that back and working out the muscles that we've isolated. All right, three more. Two, we're almost done, and one. Great job. Go ahead and stretch it out. It's also pretty nice if you stretch it out on the ball. Let's go ahead and grab the ball. We're going to round our back. This feels really good here. And hold. Also stretching hip flexors, lower back. Again, you decide what feels good for you. Don't stretch too far back as you start to feel pain. Wonderful job. We're back. We're going to work on triceps, hips, and chest. So you're going to go ahead and grab, again, turning, grab your heavier weights. Again, if five pounders were what you maxed out on for your biceps, feel free to heavy up a little bit more because the chest are larger muscle groups. If you start out and you start to feel that it's a little too much for you, you can always go back down to fives or you can easily do a five pounder with a one pound weight just to increase it a little bit. Now go ahead and lay back. We're going to stick our hips up in the air so we're isolating, or I'm sorry, um, isometric with the glutes and hams. Weights are coming right above the chest. Now, if you're back here, you're utilizing more shoulder, we want to target the pectoralis, 
major and minor, which is your chest muscles. Go ahead and open up your hands here nice and wide. Come all the way up to the top. Seven. Six. Good. Five more. Make sure you're breathing. By this time, you're probably tired. You might be forgetting something. So check mark. Breathing. Back flat. Stomach tucked. Arms right above the chest. Again, one more set here. Five more. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. We're going to pulse it out. Here we go for eight. Just remember, when you're breathing, every milliliter of oxygen you take in, you burn an additional five calories. You want to make sure you're breathing. Not that you can huff and puff and burn more calories, but just to show you the importance of the breathing throughout a workout. Four more. Four. Three. How are those butts feeling? Two. Ready to pulse? And one. Pulse it out. Again, feel free to listen to your body. Lighten up, heavy up, whatever you need to do. Let's stretch it out, singles. I always do singles after the pulse because the pulse is quite um, intense. It's a lot of tension in the muscles, so we're going to lengthen it out a little bit. Four more. Three. Let's change it up and add a little bit more of the try. Weights come together here. We're doing what's called a skull crusher. Elbows are in, nice and tight. Good. We're also working a little bit more of the outer pecs. This is what's going to draw your chest muscles in, ladies. <laughs> we get older, we know what happens. Four. Three. Now control your weight. Pulse it out here at the bottom. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Don't lose that butt. Singles, here we go. Eight, seven, come on guys. Six, we got this. Five, four more. We're almost done. Get ready for a pulse. Pulse it out. Four, three, two, and release. Great job, we're gonna come right back to that. We're gonna move on. All right, here we go, back to chest. As you can see, I switched the camera around just so you can get a better view. Four, that's right, we got two sets. Take your time with these, we don't wanna rush. And again, eight, seven, good. Four more. Four. Getting ready for a pulse. Two. And one. Pulse it out. Here we go. Five. Four. Three. Two. And release. And again. Six. Five. Four. Three. Finish off a set of singles. That's right. Five more. Five, count it out loud. Four, three, two, and one. Awesome job. We're gonna take it down and go ahead and do the triceps one more time. Here we go. Skull crushers. Elbows stay in as you start to feel weaker. Elbows are going to start coming out like this. You want to make sure you keep them in nice and tight. If you have to compromise, don't dip as much in the back. If you want to keep going and you don't feel like you can, four more. And pulse it out. Here we go. We're going to finish off with singles. I know you're dying. Come on. It's nice and long. Hold at the top if you need a break. 
Come on, six more. And five. Four. Three. Try to lock the elbows. Two. And one. Awesome job. Go ahead and put the weights on the hips. Here we go for, um, we're gonna actually work the pelvis. We're gonna squeeze the glutes and all the muscles surrounding the lower lumbar spine here. Glutes, hams, intercostal muscles. This is wonderful if you've just had a baby or um, lower back issues or just a weak lower body in general. Four, three, two, one more set. And again, eight. You guys have been working so hard today. Great job. We're almost done. Four more. Three, two, and one. We're gonna pulse. Eight, nice and small. Six, like little butt pinches. <laughs> Three, two, and hold. Three, two, back to singles. Now what you wanna do is not let your butt touch the ground. If you need to cheat a little bit and you're dying, go ahead, let your butt touch. But if you can, try to stick through it. Three, you got this. Two, getting ready for a pulse. Feel that glute now, working gluteus maximus and minimus. You'd be surprised how many muscles are actually in the glutes, glute area. And hold, three, Two, one more set of singles, and we'll take a break. Come on, count it out loud. Seven, six, we got this. Five more, five, let's go. Four, three, don't stop now. Two, last one, best one. Good, nice and break. Go ahead and stretch it out, lengthen those legs. Stretch out the arms here. The only time you're allowed to arch your back in a workout is when you're stretching. Here we go. Great job, let's do it again. If you need to lighten up, feel free. If you need to take the weights all together away, feel free. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, you got this. Here we go, eight, seven, six. If you wanna create a little bit more resistance, feel free to resist yourself. Push the weights down and resist your hips as they come up. Four, three, two, one, and again, good, eight, seven, six, five, four more, four, three, two, and pulse it out, here we go, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and singles, eight, breathing, six, Five, nice and controlled. Four, three, two, that's right, we have another pulse. Here we go. Eight, seven, six, breathing nice and tight. Three, two, back to singles. Eight, seven, good, six, we're almost done, guys. Four, three, two, and one. Alrighty. Great job. All right, we're almost done. One of the best exercises you can do for your lower back is a plank. That's working the entire core, your entire trunk. So again, no twisting at all. We're just gonna do a regular plank, just nice and simple today, and we'll slowly add more and more of a challenge as we go along, as we build up. So we're gonna start out here. Elbows are down. If this is too difficult, feel free to raise the arms here. This really helps take away some of that tension. So we're going to go ahead and hold for 15 seconds. Again, pulling navel to spine will protect the lower back. If your back starts to hurt, it's because you're putting too much pressure there. The other great thing is put all of your weight on your toes. If you're up forward like this, you're going to strain your shoulders a lot quicker. Eight, seven. Six, five. Try to keep your neck and spine in alignment. And release. Now if that was easy, go ahead and try with the arms down, okay? Here we go, let's try this way. If you need to keep it modified, 
go ahead and feel free. Again, all the weight is here on the toes. Nice deep breath. It's okay if you shake. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and release. Child's pose it back. Nice deep, nice deep stretch here. Let's do one more of each. Again, if it proves to be too easy, feel free to go ahead and lengthen the time of the plank. Here we go. Let's try 20 seconds this time. Halfway done. You got this, nice and squeezed, nice and tight. Four, three, two, and release. Awesome job, stretch your back. Child's pose. Stretching out the arms and the lower back. Go ahead and lift the arms up here. We are almost done. We have one more. You with me? Here we go. 20 seconds. Again, weight is on the, on the toes. Luckily, I have a clock that counts down for me in the background if you can hear it. Halfway done. Five, four, three, two, and release. Amazing, amazing job. Again, stretch out the arms here. Go ahead and bring the leg in front of you here and lean it forward. You're going to feel a little bit of a stretch behind the leg in the front and the inner thigh as well. Go ahead and lift it up and open up the side. Now again, if you have the disc issue, I wouldn't recommend twisting. I would just recommend right here. This is your home. <laughs> All right, switch. Good, feeling that opposite, opposite side. Now, after a workout, it's usually good to stretch between 20 and 30 seconds. If you want to stretch for flexibility, go ahead and increase that time from 30 seconds to about a minute to a minute and a half. You'll notice huge improvements in your ability, your flexibility. Coming back onto the knees, we're going to go ahead and roll onto our backs. Go ahead and draw the knee towards the chest here. This feels really great if you have someone pushing on you or just resisting yourself here. Go ahead and cross the leg here. Again, if you have disc issues, I would say tread lightly with this stretch, but since you're not putting any sort of pressure on the back and you're not carrying any weight, it should be okay. So if you start to feel any pain, go ahead and stop. Now we're going to open up the hip. As you can see, I have a weight in the way. Feel free to move, remove your weights before you stretch. Good. Now switch. Open up the right leg. You should feel that back kind of loosen. Good. Go ahead and draw it across the body here for a deeper stretch. Draw the leg in. Also, it's nice to stretch to some soothing music, so feel free to end some end your CD, your workout CD, with some soothing music. Go ahead and draw the legs in. And stretching it out here. Feel free to use the ball again. Arch the back here, drawing it up. Great, go ahead and roll onto the thighs back onto your knees here. We're going to grab our handy dandy ball. We're going to stretch a little bit more around the ball. Go ahead and lean. Just open up that back. Feels really good. 
to relax and collapse on the ball. Stretch those biceps. And shoulder stretch here. Nice deep breath in. You can also use the wall. Stretch out the shoulder. Tricep here. Great job, we're all done.